Hi, my name is Stefan. I'm from Danivik and I'm keen to learn about meat processing. The New Zealand meat processing industry is a world leader. There are 80 meat processing plants around the country with high levels of production, stringent hygiene standards, stringent safety standards and a commitment to deliver the highest quality products to local and export markets. So we've brought Stefan along to one of the most modern plants in the country, Silver Fern Farms in Te Aroha, to sample a day in the industry. The manager of the processing plant is Dean McNaught. Hi, you must be Stefan. Hey. I'm Dean. Nice. Follow me, I'll come and show you around. Health and safety and hygiene are a top priority. So first up, Stefan has to read some health and safety rules and sign in, then get changed into some clean working clothes. All right, Stefan. I'll just give you a quick explanation of uh, what goes on. These guys up here, they're uh, EA grade beef boners. Right, it's a very highly skilled uh, uh, part of the process. Down the bottom end, there is the, the, the trimmers and uh, the intermediate intermediate guys, or which we call uh, B graders. So the product is uh, deboned here, down to the trimmers, and then it comes over up to the packing side over here. Now this is the last point where the product is seen before it is opened by the customer overseas. So extremely important. But the industry in itself is uh, uh, worth millions, millions and millions to the New Zealand economy. So it's a very important industry. So let's go down and we'll go and have a look. Let's do it. All of, all of our uh, product, or probably 90 to 95 percent of our product, is all exported um, outside of the country. Um, and then we do have the odd uh, 5 to 10 percent which is uh, sold, sold within. The export market demands the highest quality. So at Silverfern Farms, they strive to create the world's best red meat experiences, a top quality product, and everyone working there goes the extra mile to make the difference. Before any worker enters or leaves the main processing room, called the secondary butchery, they must wash their boots and their hands thoroughly. The hygiene standards are strictly enforced. Now it was time for Stefan to try his hand at some work. Most people will start work as a C-grade employee. Kylie is a C-grade and her job is packing the finished product. So I'll tell you what to do with the first. So you just got to weigh them. You want to check that there's no bones along here and that there's no hair in the bag. And so the weight is 2.5, so it will go under this one here. So I'll get you to weigh one on here. So check the weight, which is 2.68, so that will go into that one. Awesome. And you check for check to see if there's any bone. That's 2.6, so that will go into that one. Same again? Cool. Yeah. And with our scanners, we scan the barcode. With the plant, obviously, to be profitable, we need to make sure that we do uh, attain um, as much meat off the bone um, as humanly possible. So we do have KPI targets in that, that set, which uh, not only us as managers need to meet, but also the staff on the floor. KPI targets are key performance indicator targets. It is the trimmer who trims the meat to maximise the yield that contributes to those targets, which is important for the plant's profitability. Trimmers are B-grade employees. Len is an expert trimmer who shows Stefan the skills involved in the job. This is a ribeye. Now we have to trim it up to spec. What sort of things are you looking for when you're cutting that up? There's uh, three specific things. You've got to look for bone, uh, gland and blood clot. When we look on this side, we have to watch out for bone, any bone, any bone that comes in because all our meat is boneless. So that's trimmed up to spec. That goes onto here. Oh, so you get all the meat ready for the customer. And then it goes along the belt to the packers. So uh, do you want to have a go? Uh, yeah, we'll get yeah. you a ribeye. Here's the ribeye. So where do we start? Okay, we'll start by pulling out under there, try and cut under there really carefully. Okay. And you'll notice Everything sort of comes out. Yep, cut down there. Cut along here now. Cut a square in. Oh, and then make it nice and square. And that'll square it all up. And then you place that piece up onto the scale. And that'll go off to the packers. And now 2,000 more to go. The next roll Stefan takes a look at is that of the boner itself. 
This is the top grade in the secondary butchery and is highly skilled where knowledge of the cuts, attention to detail, personal strength and dexterity are all key attributes. We show Stefan how it's done. How long have you been doing this kind of work for? 20 years. Yeah. Looks like you've done quite a bit of skill and dexterity involved. It is, bro. Safety's paramount here. Yeah. Especially on the bone chain. Oh, okay. How long does it take to sort of get up the strip of Well, some learn it fast, some can't learn it fast. Yeah. The body will let you know. Yield. You want to try and get as much, uh, much meat off as you can. Especially, oh, okay. you know, just like a race car. They want to try and get the best out of the car. Yeah. They want to try and get the best out of the car. But for me, this was the pinnacle of the matrix for me. On to the next one now. On to the next one. Primary ITO offer a number of qualifications in the meat processing industry and their training advisors make regular visits to the processing plant to help employees who are going through qualifications. Kevin Fisher, a primary ITO account manager, explains the qualification process to Stefan. Um, primary ITO offer several different types of qualifications. Um, there's one which is the boning apprenticeship, which is over 30 months. Um, the other way is to start off with a entry level qualification, which is meat processing introductory level one. Um, from there, you would go off to do a level two qualification, and as you can see here, depending on what department you went into, you would do a different qual. So anyone who does a qualification in these areas here can then move up to here, where you've got your first line management level three and four qualifications. So any any young one coming in. Um, it's, it's a career which can be very, very rewarding. Um, you can, regardless of what qualification you have, um, make a career off because all the training that is given to you. Um, and as you can see, you know, I've started from the floor. Um, I've now got a, uh, the Waikato or the Northern North Island region. So um, you can get there. <laughs> I've had a um, good day at the Meatworks, uh, had a look at a lot of um, interesting skills, um, looks like a good working environment and a good career path, um, might be just the job for me. The primary ITO offers various qualifications in the meat processing industry from introductory level 1 through to level 4 national certificates. All training is carried out on the job so you can earn while you learn. Training resources and assessment material are supplied by the primary ITO for many of the qualifications. There are multiple pathways into the meat processing industry. The meat processing industry can be a very rewarding industry to work in.